I was always very strong at the beginning of my career that I always had to take a left turn a little bit. No matter what they asked me to do, I always had to make sure that it was done my way. Lady Gaga is one of the most unusual pop stars to rise to fame. Her obscure fashion looks and bizarre appearances have elevated her to icon status. Gaga is constantly evolving with her ever-changing sound. She was named the Queen of Pop in a 2011 ranking by Rolling Stone based on record sales and social media metrics. Well, when I, when I was around 19 years old, I was like, I'm gonna make it. And I'm gonna, I was dragging my piano around New York, banging on every door to play. And I, 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 nothing could stop me. Reinventing herself for every album, award ceremony, and red carpet. And with a strong fan base behind her, she continues to reign as one of the biggest pop stars of the industry. Winning countless awards, including an Academy Award, her contribution to the music and entertainment industry is powerful, original, and incomparable. She has progressed to take on different projects, which steer away from the outlandish image she was once known for. Whether it's releasing a jazz album with Tony Bennett or starring in her first leading role in a Hollywood blockbuster, Gaga shows no signs of slowing down. It's been my dream since I was a little girl that I would be able to even, you know, work as an actress, to uh, work as a musician, uh, to make it in this world. And I just, I can't believe that I'm here and I'm so very happy. And my whole family is here with me. One of the most successful musicians in the world, she continues to reign supreme in all her glory. Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanata was born on the 28th of March, 1986, into a family with Italian and French-Canadian ancestry. Growing up on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, her parents came from lower-class families, working hard for everything they had in order to provide Stephanie with a good upbringing. Lady Gaga grew up in a Italian-American family, she won't let people forget that one, and her parents were very, very working class, but they worked incredibly hard to put their daughters through the best schools that a middle-class family wishing for their children to go down the creative route could ever hope for. Although Gaga was, was affluent from the start, she really had a strong work ethic uh, instilled into her because that's what her parents had, had had and how they'd achieved something. Her musical talent was discovered at the tender age of four, when she began taking piano lessons. By age 13, she was songwriting. And that's really kind of underpins everything she does. If you go and see Lady Gaga in Las Vegas today, she'll be playing the piano. Obviously, she's known for her kind of really high-powered dance routines and her really big, bombastic performances, but Lady Gaga at her piano is how she started and she can still deliver in that way today. Stephanie's parents encouraged her to pursue music and acting, enrolling her in a summer creative arts camp while she was on breaks from school. Coming from a religious family, she attended the Convent of the Sacred Heart, a private all-girls Roman Catholic school from age 11 before attending the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute for 10 years to study method acting. While in her teens, she auditioned for many different acting roles and plays with no success. This led her to realize she wasn't meant for the world of acting yet. 
and pushed her towards focusing on music. Stephanie then went on to attend New York University Tisch School of the Arts, studying music and improving her songwriting skills. This solidified her passions for creating music and performing. She dropped out in the second semester of her sophomore year to focus on creating music and becoming a performer. During this time of self-discovery, she realized that she wasn't meant to be just Stephanie, and bigger dreams lied ahead. Stephanie's introduction to the music world came through her relationship with music producer Rob Fusari. He wanted to try and kickstart a career for her and even came up with her star title, Lady Gaga, influenced by the Queen song, Radio Gaga. Shortly after recording some demos with Fusari, Lady Gaga got her first signing with Def Jam Records as a songwriter. Before her own music was even released, she was songwriting for other musicians. The contract with Def Jam Records was short-lived, as the company didn't like this persona of Lady Gaga, her edginess and obscure ideas, so they dropped her after three months. With a heavy heart, Lady Gaga returned to her home in New York and began to take performing into her own hands. She started up in burlesque clubs and entered into the world of go-go dancing. Fusari continued working on Gaga's demos, wanting to see her succeed. Eventually, she met with producers for Interscope Records and other imprints of the company. This led to her relocation to Los Angeles to focus on releasing a debut album. She also established her own creative team during this time, House of Gaga. You know, we all see very eye to eye on things and we propel one another and that's what's great about working with your friends and working with people that you really love their work because you love to see them do great things. Lady Gaga's debut album, The Fame, was released August 19, 2008. The album was very successful and reached number one in the UK along with other European countries. The album went on to win a Grammy for Best Electronic Dance Album. You're in LA. Hey guys, um, well, I just saw two music videos, yeah. and I'm going to go to London to see the dolls. I'm on tour with them now. That's right. Are you really excited about that? Yes, I'm so excited. Awesome. As we always know, the fame was a phenomenon really from the start. Her, her first single, Just Dance, was a number one hit all around the world. Just Dance was the song that launched Gaga, but I think the one that really kind of cemented her as a huge deal was Poker Face. It's probably even today, like if you ask people to name two or three Lady Gaga songs, they're gonna say Poker Face. It's just such a catchy electro pop song of the era with a really great glamorous video. Poker Face was the best-selling single of 2009, with 9.8 million copies sold that year. This song also won a Grammy for Best Dance Recording. She had cemented herself as the new hot thing in pop music, and it was only when she started to do a few interviews that people realized there is a lot of depth underneath here. This is the Trojan horse. The Trojan horse was this very clean, happy, accessible pop whereas there were layers beneath that we would come to see more of. The fame was largely inspired by the surge of tabloid stories surrounding female pop stars in the years it debuted. Gaga said the album was intended as a warning to leave female tabloid fixtures alone. It's another song that's really kind of playing off this idea that Gaga's whole purpose is to be famous, her whole purpose is to give everything she's got to her fans, but that comes with a, a downside, which is that the paparazzi are gonna hound her. 
And she really visualizes that with her performance at the VMAs in 2009, where we see her rising from the stage and bleeding. Gaga's performance of Paparazzi at the 2009 VMA Awards is considered by many to be a performance that changed pop music forever. It's really her saying, look, I'm giving you everything I've got, even if it hurts me. That's how deep I'm into what I'm doing. And this isn't just a job for me, this is my life. She completely confounded what was being expected from her. She headlined her first tour, The Fame Ball, from March to September 2009. The most important thing to me is my fans and to using to use my music and the performance art of what I do to be an inspiration and to liberate. I always say my art is liberation. It reminds me why I want to do work like this so much because I look out into the audience and I hear them singing my music and, and supporting me and I think I want to do everything I can to protect them because some of them are very troubled and insecure and don't feel that they fit in. While on this tour, she wrote eight new songs, which made up a new album, the Fame Monster EP. Despite everything she's got going on, she manages to write what's essentially a whole new album, an eight-track EP, the Fame Monster, which actually could be Lady Gaga's greatest ever release. It's got no dud tracks on it. Every song is a winner. Its first single, Bad Romance, was released one month earlier and went to number one in the UK and Canada, reaching number two in the US. Bad Romance also won the Grammy for Best Short Form Music Video and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. Not a bad start to her career. I find it so important to be now a role model and a figure. And I know that that might sound st strange to some people who say, oh, but she's so, you know, her clothing and whatever people may think of me. I know what pe some people may think of me, but most importantly is my connection with my fans and the connection that they breed with one another. Within the first couple years of her professional career, she had generated such a buzz surrounding her music and persona. Lady Gaga was who everyone was talking about. Anticipation for her next album was incredible. She had already established a huge fan base who loved her style and the image of being true to yourself. Born This Way, Gaga's second studio album was released on May 23rd, 2011, debuting in the top five of every major music chart worldwide. Lady Gaga's second album, Born This Way, arrived with so much expectation. She was the biggest pop star on the planet at this stage, and she'd just come off the Fame Monster, which was an eight-track EP that was basically perfect. There was a lot of expectation on Lady Gaga to do as well as the Fame Monster. She'd already set up this huge legend around herself as being a pop star who could mess around with our expectations and create wonderful, catchy pop at the same time. And then Born This Way came along. The single of the same name earned a Guinness World Record when it sold more than one million copies within five days of its release. It was a self-declared gay anthem. It was her directly mentioning LGBT issues and she mentioned transgender in a song before it had ever been mentioned in any other mainstream recorded song. She said, I'm gonna make you a gay anthem and the gays loved it. 
This uh, album is my baby. <laughs> I spent uh, over a year and a half, almost two years writing it. Uh, and I wrote it while on tour, uh, on the Monster Ball tour. So I was inspired by each and every city that I went to and the fans from each and every city. The album is about being yourself and loving who you are and being proud. And that in life, you can be reborn over and over again until you find that part of you uh, that represents you the best. The single also gained Gaga a lot of respect for supporting everyone being who they want to be and promoting self-love. She also became very popular with the LGBTQ plus community from this. It was all about being who you are, no matter who you are. It really set into motion a big cultural discussion that was already being had by a lot of people in the LGBT community, but she showed herself as a real ally and set up an LGBT foundation called the Born This Way Foundation. It was an incredibly successful song. I think over time that song has really solidified her relationship with the LGBTQ community. It's not the most subtle song in the world. It's a little bit obvious, but I think everyone knows that what Gaga was doing was well-meaning. And it's a, you know, it's a really massive tune. If you're out in the club and that song comes on, you're gonna dance. Gaga began work on her third studio album, Art Pop, in early 2012, during the Born This Way Ball Tour. People started to perhaps lose sight of her poppier overtones. It was, it was revealing more of her artsier interests. Born This Way, the previous album, had performed well, but maybe not quite as well as, as she would have liked. And art pop from the start was talked up as this kind of phenomenon that was like no album we'd ever seen before. There was talk of it being an app and inventing a whole new kind of music. I mean, art pop was basically a play on like Warhol's pop art, but Gaga was talking up like something new. Art Pop sold more than 2.4 million copies worldwide, showing Gaga was continuously dominating ratings and music sales. Applause was the first single to be released from this album. It received positive feedback for its fast pace and catchiness. In 2014, Lady Gaga showed the world a new side to her vocals by recording a jazz album with fellow musician Tony Bennett. The album, Cheek to Cheek, explored a more down-to-earth angle of Gaga's character. She decided to go to all these old classics and sing with Tony Bennett, this legendary jazz singer, and they sang Cheek to Cheek, which is you know, the, the, biggest, the biggest song off of that duet album. Choosing to do these old jazz classics with this huge voice that she hadn't necessarily been able to show off within the songs from beforehand was a sudden maturing. She's up there with Barbara Streisand now and it appeals to an audience she might never have had before and she might never have had if she'd never done that album. She appealed to people who like easy listening and people who like jazz and people who adore Tony Bennett as she does as well. And the affinity they had was quite huge. 
Lady Gaga wanted to be able to show off what she can do without the dancing, without the visuals. This album also won her another Grammy for Best Traditional Pop Vocal Album. At the time, people thought it was a little kind of side project, a little sidestep from her. Actually, five years later, we can see it's maybe the beginning of Gaga laying the groundwork to become a more of an all-round entertainer. It's showing that she can hold her own vocally with one of the greatest vocalists ever and make a whole album with him. I mean, Tony Bennett has recorded with a lot of younger artists, but Gargoyle's the only one he's made a full album with. So it's real, really an endorsement for her kind of, uh, her future as a long-term legacy artist. It's crowded and damn. That's why the lady is a tramp. Sometimes I go to Coney Island. Oh, the beach is divine. Jeter's just fine. I follow Rogers and Hart. She sings every line. That's why the lady is a tramp. In 2015, she fulfilled her lifelong dreams of wanting to be an actress by landing a role in American Horror Story Hotel. I always imagined that I would have a long love affair with music and with art and with reading my books and plays. But I never imagined any of this. This is truly magnificent, and uh, I'm extremely honored to be in the company of such talented people tonight. I always wanted to be an actress. I went to acting school for many years, and this is just the best thing that could have ever happened to me, honestly. Lady Gaga joining this series could have been seen as stunt casting, but actually when the show aired, it was impeccable casting. Gaga just brings so much charisma to the role. It really is the start of us seeing her as a, as a really viable, incredible actress. At the 73rd Golden Globe Awards, Gaga received the Best Actress in a Miniseries or Television Film Award for her work on the season. The Countess is very evil. She's not a good-willed kind of person. But what I do find in her, which I am happy to say today, is that after 100 years, she never gave up, no matter what she went through. And you will fail in this business. It's a matter of when. And the true test is if you can continue. Pop stars who try to launch acting careers are often made fun of, but straight away with her first major role, Gargoyle wins a Golden Globe for uh, Best Actress in a TV Series. So straight away, the kind of the, the stigma that pop stars who try to act tend to get saddled with. Gargoyle's got an answer to that. She's got a Golden Globe in her cabinet. So straight away, she's a, a viable actress who can look to get bigger roles in the future. In 2016, Lady Gaga released her fifth studio album, Joanne, named after her late aunt, who was an inspiration for the music. It became her fourth number one album on the Billboard 200, making her the first woman to reach the U.S. chart summit four times in the 2010s. How's it being out there again, getting Joanne to the world and everyone hearing it? It's wonderful. It's also very emotional. You know, I think over the past uh, 10 years now that I've been in the music industry, I've been watching not only what's happening in music, but what's happening in culture and society. And I see that money has been put on this tremendous pedestal. I see that being wealthy and being beautiful has been put on this tremendous pedestal. And with Joanne, I wanted to create a record that was about putting family on a pedestal and kindness on a pedestal and friendship on a, pe on a pedestal. Lady Gaga comes back with her Joanne album. The cover shows uh, Lady Gaga wearing a pink cowboy hat, which is really her saying, this is my stripped back, rootsy American album. It, there's a lot of country sounds on there. It's an album that's very personal in its themes and in its musical approach, really trying to show a more kind of rootsy and raw side to Lady Gaga. Joanne features stripped-down country, soft rock, and dance pop genres, which really emphasize her vocal abilities. 
I always get nervous before I sing. I always get nervous before I, I come out to see the press and say hello to everyone because it's um, quite a responsibility. And I would actually say I'm more nervous now than I used to be because when I was younger, I didn't quite understand what it meant to have a voice in the world and I didn't have the same voice in the world that I do today. And now I am so aware of it and I want to make sure I always say the right thing. Uh, to inspire young girls and boys, to inspire inspire older girls and boys, uh, to ins uh, be uh, a role model in some type of way. I know that I'm not a, a role model in always in everyone's eyes, um, but I do the best that I can through music and uh, through performance. The album was also very different from what Gaga had released previously. Perfect Illusion was the lead single from the Joanne album, and it's kind of a bridge between past Lady Gaga and Lady Gaga today. And it's got a rockier sound, but it's also a song that works well on the dance floor. This is a record about uh, being vulnerable. I'm not better than anyone else, and I'm not less than anyone else. We are all here together, we're all human, and we're walking on the same earth. And that is what Joanne is, that's my middle name. Gaga performed as the headlining act during the Super Bowl 51 halftime show on February 5th, 2017. Her performance featured a group of hundreds of lighted drones forming various shapes in the sky above Houston's NRG Stadium, the first time robotic aircraft appeared in a Super Bowl program. It attracted 117.5 million viewers in the United States, exceeding the game's 113.3 million viewers. The performance led to a surge of 410,000 song downloads in the United States for Gaga, and earned her an Emmy nomination in the Outstanding Special Class Program category. She embarked on a world tour for the album after her performance at the Super Bowl halftime show. The creation of this album and her preparation for the halftime show were the main features for her own documentary, Gaga, Five Foot Two, which premiered on Netflix. Well, basically what I told him is, is if I am aware that you are filming me all the time, I'm going to go crazy and we can't do this simply. So as long as you can be a fly on the wall and I sort of forget that you're there, you know, I'll give you access to everything. Uh, it was very easy to do that in a way. And what's so remarkable about this collaboration is like everything that I do, I like to jump in fully. So I was happy to be his subject and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I'm gonna see the full film right now. It also documented Gaga's struggles with fibromyalgia, a chronic pain condition she has suffered with severely, which also influenced the cancellation of the last 10 dates of her Joanne tour. The truth is that it's always affected my work and it's always affected me completely. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's any more now than it's ever been. Becoming more open about her condition and struggles with chronic pain have encouraged a conversation surrounding the condition and has helped others to understand its symptoms and effects. Fibromyalgia isn't a condition that people had really ever heard of before. And I think initially there was a little bit of skepticism in the press that maybe Gaga was just tired or couldn't be bothered to do his last 10 shows. What we now know is that it's a really serious condition that's plagued Gaga her entire career. Early on, she didn't talk about it much, so it came as a bit of a surprise when we heard she'd been diagnosed with it. I think now everyone knows that it's a legitimate condition that Gaga will have to manage for the rest of her career, especially when she's on the road. Her body is not doing what she wants it to do, and I think any woman in her early 30s not knowing what's going on there is gonna be freaked out to some extent. And seeing that was a real reality check. And people begun to see Gaga for the human she is behind the pomp and ceremony and the ridiculous shows and the big, huge pop music. 
In 2018, Lady Gaga made her on-screen debut in a remake of the 1937 romantic musical A Star is Born. The remake was directed by Bradley Cooper, who was also taking on one of the lead roles opposite Gaga. Lady Gaga's next big acting role is A Star is Born. Fourth time Hollywood has made A Star is Born. When the film was announced, it, we heard she was going to be starring with Bradley Cooper uh, and that he'd be directing. There was a little bit of skepticism. I think the general consensus was we don't need another version of this story. We've seen it with Judy Garland. We've seen it with Barbara Streisand. But as soon as it started playing at film festivals, even before the film came out, it was clear it was going to be a really big deal. Gargoyle's performance was really the thing that was singled out for the most praise. Uh, she plays a character called Ali, who's a, an aspiring singer-songwriter who uh, becomes involved with a, an older, established star who's got a drink problem, and she's really the heart and soul of that film. So I think after A Star Is Born, she's a legitimate film actress who can probably have her pick of roles. Hey. What? I just want to take another look at you. In all the good times, I find myself longing for change. Here's what we're going to do. You come sing that song that I love. No, I can't do that. Here, come on, here we go. Trust me. It's not funny. <laughs> Look at me. All you got to do is trust me. That's all you got to do. I have to say that me and Bradley were so entrenched in the characters. Uh, that this moment when we were filming felt so real, so alive. We had a live audience watching us. We sang the film live. Uh, and because I have never done a film before, as a actress, for me, it was very easy to kind of go to a place where I was saying to myself, okay, I've never done this before. This is my first time on film. And, and, and get into that circumstance and then go out into play. And, and she, she does, Ali has that, she takes a bit of liquid courage, she knocks down the shot glass and she goes out there and she gives it her all. And I remember very well that I, it was, I think the last take of the uh, performance, we did many takes of it, and it was the last take and Bradley came over to me right before and he said, okay, now on this one, I want you just to have fun. And I, I performed and I'll never forget it. It really did feel like I was performing uh, my song for the first time. It was very, very special. And I, I just have to add to that, we can all attest to that. You know, it was special for you, but I wish you could have been there to actually watch it happen because as, as, while we were filming this movie, we also had the opportunity of watching and being a part of watching her sing. <laughs> every day and it was literally the whole crew would just sit back and we were all we all kind of forgot we were even doing a job every time she sang we were just sort of sitting there watching it and feeling very grateful that we were there at this moment to watch this incredible artist uh, do her thing and that really it never got old right i mean it just in, it was insane all of a sudden she starts and you know the temperature in the room changes she somehow managed to peddle this line that she was just this little, this, you know, little unknown from, from Manhattan, just trying to make it big in the big city and uh, not quite acknowledging that she was already a huge star. But it was a comeback in some ways. She'd already had to cancel a load of concerts. People weren't necessarily sure they were going to get another tour out of her. And then she comes along with this story all about a young woman a lot like herself, going against the odds and making it into a huge star and kind of crushing everyone else in her path. And I've been able over the years to meet some amazing musicians uh, who have done very well in their field. And uh, the one thing that I'd always heard unsolicited was how much respect she has across the community as an artist. Um, outside of that, I was not that familiar with her. And it wasn't until I heard her sing live where I was absolutely blown away. And then I met her a couple days later and then once meeting her, it's, you know, she's an incredible human being. And um, it was, uh, and then I got very excited about the idea of her potentially, you know, using all of that magic. Uh, what I wasn't aware of was her work ethic. Her work ethic is just unparalleled. The pair had amazing on-screen chemistry and even performed the leading single from the film, Shallow, several times at awards shows. 
Lady Gaga didn't just star in A Star Is Born. Very cleverly, she exec produced and recorded the soundtrack. She actually w wrote a lot of the songs on A Star Is Born with Mark Ronson, who she'd worked with on Joanne. And in hindsight, you can almost see Joanne as kind of a test run for the A Star Is Born soundtrack. The big breakout hit from A Star Is Born is Shallow, her duet with Bradley Cooper, which won Best Song at the Oscars and at the Golden Globes and is probably up there with Poker Face, now her defining song. When they performed it at the Oscars, it really flipped around what had happened in A Star Is Born. In A Star Is Born, you've got Jackson, who's Cooper, and you've got Ali, who's Lady Gaga, and Jackson's kind of helping Ali into this big, wide world of the music industry. And then, cut to the Oscars, you've got Bradley Cooper, who's not the best singer, and Lady Gaga at the piano just her encouraging him to really go for it and sing and her kind of taking him through it. And at the end, they almost, almost kiss, which of course added to so many more rumors that they were together, which definitely increased the hype around the film. In the shallow, shallow, in the shallow, shallow, la, la, la. In the shallow, we're far from the shallow now. This was the leading single from the film. It reached number one on both the US and UK charts. The song earned Gaga an Academy Award, a Golden Globe and Critics' Choice Movie Award for Best Original Song as well as Grammys for Best Pop Duo and Best Song Written for Visual Media. I, I said it before and I'll say it again. This is not easy work and nothing was handed to us. And I couldn't be prouder to be up here with my real friends. We really sat in a room and wrote a song together, not knowing if anyone would give a damn and we talk to each other about life. Say something, Mark, I can't keep talking. <laughs> well, we also, well, me and her drank a lot of Jameson. <laughs> she sat at a piano, I'm telling you. Like, then, not today. She sat, yeah. she sat at a piano and we all had headphones on and there was like this slightly quiet, hushed vibe in the room and, and Anthony was playing a guitar. And I remember when she first was kind of like throwing out melody, she's like, Tell me something, girl. And all my hair stood up, and I thought, like, it felt like someone hugging my soul from, like, the heavens. And there's, that's what this song has. It has melancholy, it has triumph, it has the feeling of a hug, all these things. And then the performance in the film and Bradley's direction is what then put it in everyone's heart. So yes. that's all I could really We have to thank Bradley tremendously, because the truth is, Everybody in this room knows this song would not be what it is without this film and without Bradley Cooper yeah. and without his incredible voice on this record and without the way he shot this yeah. moment in this film. Gaga and Cooper together wrote and produced most of the 34 songs on the soundtrack. As of June 2019, the soundtrack had sold over 6 million copies worldwide. It just means the world to me, you know. I love acting so much. I've always wanted to be an actress, and I worked really, really hard on transforming into Ali. You know, she's nothing like me. She's nothing like how I was when I decided I wanted to go for it and be a musician and be a songwriter and, you know, become all the dreams that I had. Uh, to be honored this evening is a recognition of hard work, and, you know, I just want every little girl and little boy and people of all sexual identities that are out there to know that you can dream big and if you work hard, you can achieve whatever that you want. Lady Gaga's fans call her Mother Monster, and she often refers to them as Little Monsters, a phrase which she had tattooed on herself in dedication. As a proud bisexual woman, Gaga actively supports LGBTQ plus rights worldwide, as she attributes most of her early success as a mainstream artist to the gay community. 
it's pretty hard to find a big female pop star who doesn't have an LGBTQ fan base, but even allowing for that, Gaga has got a special bond with that community. I think it's rooted in the fact that Gaga has championed uh, LGBTQ people right from the start of her career and fought for their representation. She highlights LGBT people, but also sings about a defiance, about pushing through, about evolving, and about the wonders of just letting yourself go on the dance floor. Her fostering of the monsters, of the weird people, of the strange and obscure and the avant-garde is always going to lend itself to her being great to this community. I hope that everyone there in Sydney feels so much joy and celebrates all sexual identities. And I also have a true dream in our future as we evolve as humanity, that these award shows will not be male and female, but that we include everyone. Her music is relatable as she writes about being yourself, accepting who you are, and depicts herself as someone who never fit in properly, but she's proud of who she is today, a message she spreads to the community. I believe in the power of music to change people's lives, not necessarily my music, um, but music in general. And I want to do everything that I can to mobilize the youth to be aware of what's going on worldwide and help one another. Throughout her career, she has worn a large variety of daring outfits, such as her bloodied outfit in performance at the VMAs 2009, the meat dress at the 2010 MTV Video Music Awards, always accessorizing and wearing extreme platform heels. Her outfit at the Met Gala 2019 got heads turning as she had a four-piece outfit change throughout her walk on the carpet, fitting with the year's camp theme. However, further into her career, Gaga started to calm down with her image. Gaga has said in various interviews that she didn't feel good enough to just be herself, hence hiding behind the costumes and eccentric accessories. She says the continual reinvention is liberating herself, which she has been drawn to since childhood. After making progress in her career and finding her true self, she can keep a stripped back appearance and still be a fan favorite. After dropping several hints to her fans, in May 2020, Lady Gaga dropped her sixth studio album, Chromatica, to extremely positive reviews. Fans went wild for the new album and were streaming it from the moment it was released. On Chromatica, Gaga returned to her dance pop roots and discussed her struggles with mental health. It debuted at the top of the US charts, becoming her sixth consecutive number one album in the country and reached the top spot in more than a dozen other territories worldwide. Chromatica was promoted with two new singles, Stupid Love and Rain On Me, which featured fellow world-famous singer Ariana Grande. Rain On Me won the award for Best Pop Duo Group Performance at the 63rd Grammys and debuted at number one in the US, making Gaga the third artist to top the country's charts in the 2000s, 2010s, and 2020s.
At the 2020 MTV Video Music Awards, Lady Gaga won five awards, including the inaugural Tricon Award. Recognizing artists accomplished in different areas of the entertainment industry. On January 20th, 2021, during the inauguration of Joe Biden as the 46th President of the United States, Lady Gaga sang the national anthem. In May 2021, HBO Max aired the long-awaited Friends reunion special, which fans have been waiting for since the show ended in 2004. Lady Gaga became part of the reunion special when she sang alongside Lisa Kudrow on the set of the infamous Central Perk Cafe. They performed Smelly Cat, a song that was made popular by Kudrow's on-screen character, Phoebe Buffay. Take you to the vet. You're obviously not their favorite pet. You may not be a bed of roses, and you're no friend of those with the noses. <laughs> smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Smelly cat, smelly cat, it's not your fault. 2021 also saw Gaga step back into acting as she was cast in Ridley Scott's upcoming film, House of Gucci. Gaga is playing Patrizia Reggiani, the ex-wife of the former head of the Gucci fashion house, Maurizio Gucci. Reggiani was convicted of hiring a hitman to murder her ex-husband, which the film will explore. The press has managed to capture a glimpse at Gaga on the set as a release date has not yet been revealed. In May 2021, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Born This Way and its impact, West Hollywood Mayor Lindsay P. Horvath presented a key to the city to Gaga and declared May 23rd as Born This Way Day. A street painting with the Daniel Quasar's version of the gay flag, which includes trans and queer people of color, featuring the album's title was also unveiled on Robertson Boulevard as a tribute to the album the ways it has inspired the LGBTQIA community over the past years and to kick off the city's pride season. Following this, in June 2021, to mark 10 years since the release of her album, Born This Way, Lady Gaga announced a 10th anniversary edition of the album. It includes all 14 original tracks, as well as six special new reimaginings of fan favorite songs. Each of these new additions was recorded by artists, both part of and advocates for the LGBTQ community, of which the original album was a celebration. Upon its original release in May 2011, Born This Way became Gaga's second UK number one album and was an instant blockbuster record, outselling the rest of the top 10 combined on its release week with sales of 216,000 copies. Lady Gaga is one of the world's best-selling music artists, with estimated sales of 124 million records as of 2014, and has produced some of the best-selling singles of all time. Best loved for her quirky personality, individual sound, and passion for current affairs, Lady Gaga continues to be a role model for her fans, speaking up for what she believes in and encouraging others to do the same. The truth is, I want to take the pressure off of people. You know, you don't have to look like everyone else. You can look like you and have fun, you know, and get messy with it if you want to. <laughs> a consistent passion for everything she does, the predictions for the future of Gaga are pretty wild.
Gaga continues to take the world by storm, following her own motto, life is a performance.